Harder Brunch presents Back to Adult Summer Camp. Sponsored by Upland Brewing and Culinary Crossroads. August 23rd through the 25th. We have comedian headliners Kelly Collette and Dwight Simmons. We got musical acts Draco, Sirius Black, Philosophy of Music, and Tuesday Atlas. Activities like archery, canoeing, campfire, swimming, crafts. Don't forget to get your tickets at eventbrite.com. Harder brunch. Nope, we're not going to say that together, but it's harder brunch. Welcome to the Hard Brunch Podcast. I'm your host, Dyke Michaels. With me, as always, my co host, Daddy Shane McKee. Slappy Pappy Wang Wang. Let me check up. On the ones of two, the wheels of steel, the sauce boss of Indianapolis, and the last broke dragon. Give it up for Zach Rowan, everybody. Now, <laughs> oh. Oh. She wasn't going to miss it this time. <laughs> and then over here on video, we've got Gwen's uncle. <laughs> hey. Uh, oh, a lighter toot. <laughs> if you. <laughs> All right. This is called tooting the horn. <laughs> oh, I was thinking of prostitute. That's a, <laughs> what? Oh, that's what I hear too. That's what I think. She's of. You heard prostitute that? light. <laughs> that's not what we say about our friend Gwen. I'm going to pick up a couple <laughs> toots tonight. <laughs> I am over here doing you a favor. <laughs> <laughs> Off mic doing favors, Gwen Sung Hall. <laughs> can't call her a prostitute. Not a prostitute. <laughs> Let's clear that up. Not anymore. Uh, two very special guests with us in studio. Benedict, Chris Benedict from Love Handle, and Dominique Cinebaldi. You got it. From Cathead Press. That's right. That's what I'm talking about. Welcome Hi. to the program, boys. And, to, and together, <clears throat> you form a mighty Voltron of Handshake. That's correct. That's right. Is it just, just Handshake? Is not the Handshake? It's the Handshake. The Handshake. handshake. The hand- Ooh, let's see it. Please tell me about the handshake. <laughs> yes, something happened. There. Was that the electricity of you no, guys that was uh, like doing, doing a handshake? We yeah. held a handshake too long. It's true. That's what happens. It was the power of the shake. Yeah, do it quick. Yeah, I don't know. You tell them how it how it got rolling. Um. Well, what is it? It's uh, <laughs> <It's> a handshake. <laughs> they just started the handshake. Yeah. What is? Well, it? we're gonna we're, we're gonna open up a bar here, and it's about. Like the next, I don't know, like 10 months, 12 months out. And uh, we're just doing like pop-ups and stuff now. Like we did Woodruff Place Fest last weekend. And then before that, we did like the Diggs uh, Night Market. And um, yeah, it'll be like a bar with like barbecue stuff and like bar food. That's, you know, we're trying to make it as good as possible. And yeah, we've been doing a, a pop-up out of Love Handle Yeah, too. Pop-up, like wing pop-ups and yeah. stuff like that out of Love Handle. Yes, that. Oh, yes. Um, a pop-up bar. Can you describe that to me? Well, it'll just be a bar. You yeah, know we're just I mean? opening hopefully, a bar hopefully restaurant. Hopefully, like, a year, it'll just be, like, a bar. Yeah, okay. You know what I mean? We'll open a bar. But now we're just doing, like, pop-ups to, like, work together and try to get recipes down and, like... And, like, bank cash. Yeah, like bank cash for, like, equipment and stuff yeah. like that, like, as, yeah. we're, as we're rolling forward to it. And yeah. where's where's going to be located at? It's going to be on Washington. No, oh. Michigan. It's on Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> It was going to be on Washington. It was going to be on Washington. It's on Michigan. Okay. It's 100% yeah. going to be on Michigan. 100% on Michigan. <laughs> yeah. Like, Holy shit. Like, like east of downtown? Uh, yes. Like, yeah, nice. like Woodruff adjacent. Nice. Yeah. That's that's awesome. And, like, so, you're Chris, you're just never going to sleep? Is that the idea? You're just going to do oh, oh, yeah. morning, noon, and night? Or no, not no, going to be much of a change. Yeah, I don't know. I'll be sleeping all the time. <laughs> yeah. So, you, yeah, you still work at Love Handle. Yeah. You still own it. You still work <laughs> right there. You still oh, are yeah. allowed in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm in there. And so opening up a different, like, you know, feat is is amazing. It'll be cool. Yeah. I'm, we're stoked. Yeah. We're good friends. Yeah, we've been homies for a long we've time. We've camped. Yeah, we've gone camping. We we've went camping. That's a true test. Are you yeah. guys childhood friends? No. No, but... 
It I'm, just sounds like you're I'm giving child, euphemisms I'm now. Child, yeah, <laughs> but I'm childlike. I'm not even from like India originally. I moved here from well, I moved here from Chicago in 2011, but I moved to Chicago in 09 from Washington State. And I'm familiar with Chicago, but not Washington State. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So go figure. So yeah. you guys work. <laughs> oh yeah, it's perfect. It's perfect. Well, how did how did the camping come into play? <laughs> Uh, well, me and my uh, one of my other buddies, Michael, him and I are like hardcore kind of camping dudes. So we go camping a lot. <clears throat> and then what was it in? Uh, what month are we in right now? June. <laughs> June. So it was like what, what March we went camping. Oh, yeah. Big time. In- uh, so we were planning a March camping trip down south in like a uh, shade state park. Mm-hmm. Which was what does, what does shade state park stand for? Well, it's it's uh, uh, shades the of shades, death. yeah, shades of death. You're kidding? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like cool. what it stands for. Yeah, it's wild. That seems like a crazy name to name a, a state park after. Yeah, it's it's disconcerting, but I mean, are you familiar with the Grand Tetons? All right, no. There's what are they named a, after? Come again? Big breasts. Big, come, come Tetons again? is French. <laughs> Tetons is French for titties, and Grand and is French for big. <laughs> Big old titties, <laughs> and it's it's two mountains. It's it's two mountains, right? They're Absolutely gonna, not. A hundred percent, it is. Look off, Mike prostitute. <laughs> Why don't you give it a goog? Like my French grandmother told me as a child. Why would she tell me as a child? If Why would your truth? grandparent tell you a lie? <laughs> no, my grandma. I, <laughs> my grandpa. He would. He told me the other day for Brazil nuts when I was a child. But like my oh, grandma, man. she she only told the truth. <laughs> You and your grandma talk about boobs a lot, just just in reference to uh, state parks. Okay, because she said when the the French settlers came through, they saw these two mountains and they're like, yeah, looks like something else. We've seen that before. Seen that before. These yeah, settlers knows. are perverts. Let's just yeah. call it what it is. Or yeah. it's kind of like you know, like like what is it? You know, when you're traveling a long time in the sea and you see a a, a mountain. Yeah, you, well, you think you see a mermaid, but it's really just a sea cow, <laughs> right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's what they were seeing with the mountains. Like these, these are this is a mirage, or you know. Right. Did you bring? Did oh, you bring? Did breast. you bring it up? I thought you were googling. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Uh, I thought you were Jamie from uh, <laughs> that other show. <laughs> I think you pissed her off by calling her a prostitute. Yeah, I like that you pissed her off and then had her go fact check it. <laughs> yeah. After calling me a whore. Yeah. Um, like I don't. We don't shame here on this podcast. All right. I know. Whore um, is derogatory now. So when? <laughs> I don't know what I don't know how to understand that. Uh, this is a question. So when you guys? When does this idea? Because. You have a restaurant that's very successful that everybody knows and loves. And what is the conversation or what is the thinking like that you want to start something new that you can't do or would do differently from what you're currently doing? I want to work in a restaurant that has liquor with this man. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah. I think it'd be great. It'd yeah. be like a nighttime-ish kind of place and we'll have like... I don't know, booze and shit. It's a bar, man. It'll be great. You know what? It'll be like a bar. So it's like a bar. It'll be like a bar. Who you feel like it's more bar than restaurant. Yeah, well, it's like a bar, and we'll have great like barbecue shit. You yeah. know, it'll be fantastic. I believe I mean, in you guys so much. But I feel like, like it's fantastic. I love that the idea is that you want to hang out together. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, kind of I mean, what the business is built all the time on. Now. Yeah. We do dumb shit together all the time. I think we were. Like think, what we do. I think we were on a walk or something. We were on a walk on the Penzi. Yeah, we were on a walk on the 100%. Penzi. And, like, I, like, I mean, I, like, you know, I do screen printing by trade, and I went to art school and shit, but, like, I mean, I've always loved food, and, like, when I moved to Indy, um, when I decided to kind of, like, put roots down here was when kind of there was a lot, a lot, a lot of food going on. Um, and then uh, when I bought a house on the Near East Side, it was when Love Handle was still on uh, 10th Street. Mm. And it was, like, two blocks from my house. Yeah. I started going to Love Handle on 10th a lot. Good old and met, days. And met Chris. I was like 16 or 17, somewhere in there. 
Did you say you were 16? No, <laughs> when, no, the year 20, 2016 or 17 is when Jesus we met. Jesus Christ, I was like, what are you doing what now? <laughs> what is this bit? <laughs> They're all hooked up to shit. No, I was saying the year we met. This is recorded. What is wrong? I was just a young boy. Yeah, it must have it been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I was 16 <laughs> in yeah. 2014. Like, Chris yeah. invited me into his meat shop. Yeah. Right. It was weird. Yeah. He fed me beers. Yeah, I'm doing drugs. <laughs> With Chris, I was sixteen. I think it was sixteen. That was the That's bedrock crazy. of our relationship. Yeah, you look great for sixteen. Oh yeah. Oh, I, uh, yeah, I, I was, loved when Love Handle was there because Chris was like the mayor of every <laughs> character on that street on Tenth Street. Oh, and yeah. I was just like half those people I didn't believe existed, and like Chris knew everyone's like backstory and lore. Oh yeah, yeah, it was great. What do you mean? Like it was a cool area. It was fun. It yeah. was fun having that place, man. It was great being there. Are you talking about a lot of street people performers? I don't, nah, I don't know if there was a lot of street performers or anything, but it was like you know, it just know everyone around town, man. Everybody coming in, hanging out. It's oh, cool. that is cool. That is fun. Well, we'd have that. We a lot of times we'd be showing movies that night, just hanging out, like gunning cigs in there and like having fun, you know? Yeah, smoking joints, shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, they're gonna have fun. We did an eight-hour filming of uh, an episode of I remember that too. a show that yeah, never got where, where, where someone fed us bear meat. That? <laughs> the fucking bear. You know what I mean? It like, sounds made up when you say that, but yes, yeah, we did eat yeah, bear fucking meat. Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> that was. Uh, I feel like that was the great grandfather of Harder Brunch. Like yeah. I feel like we got like slowly got the concept, but in reverse yeah. of just like oh, the fun of this isn't. Watching the food be prepared, the fun of this is the conversation, yeah. like while you're eating, after you're eating. Absolutely. But uh, we made Chris go last, and so oh, he had eight hours to pound beers. That's like being and the then, last person yeah. to play the show. By the yeah. end, by the end, it was like they were puppeteering him, like Weekend at Bernie style. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> yeah, it was the first time I drank for eight hours. What year was that? <laughs> I was sixteen, man. I was a child. <laughs> <laughs> was 16. I was a child. I was a child. That's wild. So we met in sixteen. Yeah, or seventeen. When you guys were sixteen? Yeah, seventeen yeah. maybe. But yeah, then we were just like, I don't know. So like, I mean, I I always love food and I cook and make food. I don't know. I don't know. He can tell you if I'm an okay cook or not. But no, tell us. Is he okay cook or not? <clears throat> You're a fantastic man. Okay. So what and, the fuck? Well, you, you said man. You didn't say cook. You're a fantastic boy cook in two, when you were 16 years old. I thought you were saying you were a fantastic yeah. man. I was like, oh, he. No, I think he there was a, there was a comma. <clears throat> After yeah. fantastic oh. man, yeah, it was oh. like a Master Chef Junior. You yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what it was. Oh, that's my Oh, but yeah, so we were just yeah. like, yeah, we were walking on the Penzi one day, and like, I've always like loved the idea of opening up like a, a restaurant yeah. or a joint. You're like, you know what sucks uh, about Love Handle? No hard alcohol, <laughs> right? And we were just like walking, and we were like, I don't know, it had something to do with like we were like talking about like buying a building, just like on a whim, and yeah. like we we're like. I was like, dude, let's just like open a restaurant. Yeah. And he was just like, all right, let's do it. And then we just like started planning it. Well, yeah, because you were like talking about we were walking past that one thing out there on the Penzi when you go out, maybe, I don't know, like two miles outside of Irvington or something. It's like you see like a big building kind of thing. We're like, dude, that'd be sick to have oh, like, like this, the strip like, mall thing. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah you were like, man, it'd be crazy if we just had like some like smoker out here and we're just doing like some barbecue place or something. It'd be sick to just have some place. It's like, oh, yeah, it would be kind of tight. And you're like, dude, we should, yeah, I don't know. Somebody was, th- I forget who was talking to you at the time, but it was like, you know, somebody was talking to you at the time. Like, it was like, oh, yeah, it's like brought this up or something. Would you ever want to do something in this building? It, it was some shit like that. Where yeah. We, it, like, everything started, like, kind of coming together. And then we were like, oh, I guess we're, like, doing this now. You know what I mean? And that's about a year ago. Yeah. I feel I like some that. of the best ideas start off kind of just like, like I don't know daydreaming if we were, a little yeah, bit. You I don't know, know if we were like, fucking around, but yeah. like it, it got kind of, yeah, we were like, oh, shit, yeah, it's kind of fun, you know? Yeah. And then yeah. it was like a couple months later, like sitting at the computer, like registering an LLC. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> getting an LLC going, doing pop-ups, yeah, getting numbers together is tight. Yeah. How long how, how long did you have you run uh, Cathead for? Uh, since 2016 is when it opened. Okay. <clears throat> and it started as a non-profit and ran it as a nonprofit till uh, like 20, 
21. And it's still not pro. It's still not. Profitable. Yeah, it's still not profitable. <laughs> it's one dollar. But I just pay taxes now. Um, but yeah, I, I transitioned to LLC in like 2021 just because, I mean, I was running it like, I don't know. It just does. I mean, I could. It's a different podcast to talk about like how the bullshit of like nonprofits. Sure, sure. You know, I could go on for hours, but I'm not going to. Well, what is but, Cathead? For those uh, well, so it started off as like a uh, like a printmaking studio uh, with like artist studios, and people could use like a kind of a public space to make artwork, specifically around screen printing and like printmaking. And then as I kept running it, <clears throat> I had friends that kept asking me like, "Hey, do you print T-shirts? Do you print T-shirts?" I was like, "Well, not really. It's just kind of like an artist studio." But I started doing like T-shirt runs for like friends and stuff, and then I was like, "Oh." People pay for like t shirts, mm. and I was like, Oh, this is a way to like keep the lights on. And then it just evolved to where like 90% of the work I was doing was like screen printing t shirts for people. So I was like, I'm just gonna like be an LLC. So that's how that's it transitioned. Awesome. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's, but that's so cool. I've been running it, yeah, since like 2016, and it's like evolved slightly. I still have like an artist studio element to it, I still do like art shows, I do like workshops and stuff like that, but. What's like the the focus of your like art like were you like a painter or sculptor? So I went to when I first started art school, I was doing a lot of painting, and then I got into printmaking like really early on, like oh five to like oh seven. I started doing printmaking, and then I just like fell in love with the process. So like you know, I went to undergrad in Washington, undergrad in Chicago, and then here for grad school, all centered around like printmaking, mostly doing like the like more sort of not harder process wise, but sort of harder printmaking processes like lithography and etching the sort of more traditional ones. Um, but I never saw myself as being like a commercial screen printer. I didn't go to school for that. So it's kind of weird. <laughs> cool. Fell into it. And yeah. Then, I just oh, kind of fell awesome. into it. Yeah. I mean, I did the same. I, I mean, I did the game that like every kid that goes to art school does like, yeah, I'm going to go get my master's in art and then I'll get a tenure track teaching job at a university and then once I was done with my master's, I was like, oh, yeah, none of my professors told me that tenure track jobs don't exist anymore. Yeah. Mm. And yeah, they're just four of you. Yeah, and, <laughs> and they're just hiring adjuncts. <laughs> and, like, you're going to make, you know, That's teach right. a full load of classes and make $12,000 a year. Yeah. <laughs> like, what would I do with all that money? All right. So That's I was crazy. like, oh, this is bullshit. So I kind of got out yeah. of academia. I feel like college is a scam unless you do, like, four jobs. <laughs> right, <laughs> like, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's bonkers. It's really great for, like, four things. And yeah. Everything else is like... yeah, it sucks. Because, I mean, like, I had a lot of beautiful experience. I met a lot of people. I met my buddy Michael, my yeah. camper buddy in, in grad school, and learned a lot. Had, like, it's met cool people, people. But, yeah. like... Yeah. I don't know. I have one hundred and forty-two thousand dollars of student loan debt. <laughs> Such an expensive way to meet people. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's why we're opening a bar. Yeah, yeah, you can be an people alcoholic. that way. Yeah. That's yeah. Do you, you meet all those other people? How, what's your restaurant industry experience like? Um, I worked at a Philly cheesesteak joint when I was fifteen. Nice. And then I worked at a Sabaros. Year before I met you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I worked at Sabaros in a mood, uh, mood, uh, mall food court when I was uh, in undergrad in Bellingham, Washington. Awesome. And that's about the extent of my like commercial kitchen experience. Yeah, you went right to college. Yeah, then I went to college. <laughs> he said, "I'm getting out of yeah. Sabaros." Yeah. My question, tying in your art with your new bar, or how much art are you going to put in your new bar? Is uh, it going to be other people's art, or are you going to paint? I mean, I think a little bit of everything. I mean, I think that's like with Chris and I, like sort of our, uh, why we work really together is obviously both like passionate about food. We're both great at cooking food, but like I bring like an aesthetic element. Not that you're not aesthetic. I mean, you're a beautiful filmmaker and artist oh, wow. Thank you. of your own right, <laughs> obviously. But yeah, I mean, I think like my like aesthetic sensibilities and like my artistic background is going to play a, a Absolutely. Part, right? Yeah. I don't know, what do you Hopefully. think? Yeah, like 100%. What are you okay. talking about? Put him on the spot. Yeah, <laughs> this yeah, is we'll, recording. We'll be able right. to do the whole thing. Yeah, whether it's cool. like knowing, yeah. like, knock it out. You know, if we want something painted in there, like knowing other <laughs> artists, like the networking I've done since I moved to indie, just in knowing other artists and other creatives, I think is valuable. Absolutely. Yeah. I think even for the, even for the logo, first I went to Sylvia, mm -hmm. my daughter, and I was like, yeah, what are you thinking? And she was coming up with this logo. 
And then, um, you know, uh, you were talking about that logo. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like one bled into the other. And uh, And we came up with something. Yeah. Yeah. The logo. What is the logo? I don't know why. I don't know why I'm looking around. Yeah, is, it, is it loose on the table somewhere? I mean, it might be on my phone. Yeah. We actually Same. like. I kind of had an idea what we wanted to do, and then I had this buddy Clay, um, who I went to undergrad with in Chicago, and he uh, was running the Smudge, which was like a Rizzo publication, um, loose and tan press. What am I looking for? Anyway, so he he realized the the logo. Uh, that's not the. Yeah, because some people do get some bad logos and they don't even know it. Mm, until right. The end. Yeah, a, a bad a bad logo can really. I mean, this guy like this guy like does everything for like so many people in town. I feel like even like the like if there's like sayings and shit, like he does like a lot of that stuff. You know what I mean? Like he yeah. does like a lot of like if he's like printing a t-shirt. Oh yeah, it's clean. Oh yeah. wow, it's, it's nice and clean. Yeah. I like that. It's kind yeah. of like it almost looks like a little like a. 70s skate park kind of I mean, that was, yeah. sorry. I it does remind me of Grease a little bit in a good yeah. way. Well, I think that was our idea for the aesthetic of, like, the actual joint was, like, your grandma's basement yeah. kind mm. of vibe. So we are kind of, like, 70s sort of. Absolutely. <laughs> we're thinking about putting it down here. Yeah. You guys are thinking about putting the bar here. Yeah, right. Amaretto yeah. sour specials every night. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Mint juleps. Dude, we had the yeah. idea for uh, martini shooters. Oh, yeah. Little martini shooties. Is that just yeah. vodka yeah. shots? <laughs> so. hey, get a little olive in there, man. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Get an olive. Yeah. And then we can charge $12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about grain alcohol. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. about that. Yeah. Your grandma's basement yeah. and, and, and dank barbecue. Yeah. I'm very excited. I mean, honestly, like knowing Chris, I feel like. I feel like Chris doesn't miss, you know, mm-hmm. with his creativity and ideas. And I have been meaning to come to, I've, I've like made a plan specifically come to like two or three pop ups, and something always happened. Yeah, that couldn't go the next, last minute. Come to the next pop up. But man. the first That's one, crazy. I feel like you guys did a couple different things. And so, like, people were asking me, like, what is handshake? I was like, oh, it's this great pop up Chris is doing. Like, they're doing burritos. And the next time it was like, uh, wing skate and I was like they're doing fish I'm not sure yeah, what they're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. Like, it's, it's pizza it's something yeah but it, I mean this stuff this stuff's like that de- yeah definitely uh Dominic I mean I feel like you're doing like Dominic did all these like uh fucking Texas red hots at that Woodruff mm-hmm. thing this weekend and like man those things were like fucking crazy it's like crazy what he does you know so it's like I don't know, man. She was like pretty good, man. What's a was, Texas Red Hot? Like the sausage is like all beef sausage. Oh, oh one of those. He, he okay. doesn't like. Uh, he doesn't. Yeah, just a like, pack of candy. Or something. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, he's but, man, just, was, just loose Mike and Ike's. Yeah, right. that, that shit you was nuts, candy. man. Oh yeah, people like that. I mean, that shit was out of control. And then I, I cased bologna for one of the. Yeah, he like, cased like doing his own bologna for like these pop ups. Like I, I don't know, man. It's just like the craziest shit. Nice. It's great, and it's like everyone's like happy. You know, it's great to see people like eating it because you can't not be. It's like listening to the fucking oldies or something. Like you're like, man, it's fucking happy. Like everyone's happy, and they're like, yeah. man, it's great. I paid nine dollars for a fucking bologna sandwich. I got some chips. <laughs> great. You know what I mean? Like, why are you yeah. unhappy? Yeah, you're yeah. Unhappy why are you unhappy? Now? Yeah, no, no one's unhappy. I it's feel like that's like, one thing that Zach has taught me fantastic. recently is like kind of just uh, a return to just food that's just good and like universally yeah. liked and like yeah. take some of the pretentiousness out of it and it's just like hey we just there enjoy this like unironically this is just yeah. good is that and why I, we did I, mac the return of the mac <laughs> yeah it was good that was, was, was bad timing um but I, <laughs> I feel like every time i have like uh chefs and restaurant owner stuff i was like i'm not gonna try to like impress you with like some sort of like and this is a my special flan, you know. Like, <laughs> yeah, 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 like yeah, hey, here's some chili. I think is really good. Dude, that chili was killer. Dude, yeah, I was saying that was like the best, like peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, the, ch- the chutney, <laughs> with, the chutney with the peanut butter. Was that was all Zach. Zach yeah. wants to do a, a peanut butter pop up, a peanut butter sandwich pop up. But I was like, I was like, let's try some out on Chris. <laughs> let's yeah, try some out on. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, what? What? Tell him about the. I did two different peanut butter sandwiches. One was a uh, roasted macadamia nut and uh, watermelon jelly on uh, Hawaiian bread. And then the other one was uh, a Masaman curry PB&J. I did that on potato bread with a curried peanut butter, pickled carrots, and then pineapple jam. So good. 
So did, you, did you make the macadamia nut? Yeah. Yeah. I never even thought about that as an option. It, like, that alone was good, but, like, there was something about the... the I never had a watermelon je- jelly either. Like I didn't know what I was going to do until I went to the store today. Oh, man. It I was saw the so, watermelon. I, I really like the idea of, like, having a few just, like, really creative peanut butter and jelly sandwiches Absolutely. you think you have them like like we do it at camp and you have it where they can like you give them a list of the peanut butters and the jellies and they can make their own or oh mix of their oh themselves? that's crazy or do you have like set sandwiches made uh i think you have some set that people can grab and then maybe a, a line where we can like what the ingredients make, yeah we have like almost make. like a chipotle but of uh, peanut butter and jellies with pb and j's though it might just be so easy to wrap them up and that you know what i mean and have like them in like a cool yeah like area where you're like yeah pick from these yeah mm-hmm. you know so it's just like you're not thinking about it you just bring already. trays of them out yeah. oh man yeah. and it, three piles and it's still like that's like the low high thing with it yeah and you got all mm-hmm. these like weird ass chips around them like you're like yeah. oh i'm gonna do that with the dill pickle that sounds fantastic or you yeah. have some people walk around with a trays yeah fuck yeah oh like like you have Shot girls, you have uh, PB and J girls. Yeah, I don't know if they have to be girls, but like mm. I'm saying, like people are, like walking in like these nice like low cut like shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> yep, I'm. So they could be anybody. Any gender. Any yeah, gender. Yeah, yeah, any yeah. Gender, yep. You know, as long as a human beings walking around with a with tray, low cut, and a low cut shirt. Yeah. I don't know if we can get dressed. an animal to do it. I, I think that's say, fine goat. too. Like you teach a dog. <laughs> people yeah. love dogs. I think goats. Goats. Yeah. Well, you, you do a little mini bites, though, and then people just keep going for more. Oh, I want to try the Massaman. Oh, I want to try the, oh. you know what I'm saying? Well, I was trying to slam on the idea. Peanut butter cocktail. Peanut butter. Peanut butter cocktail. Peanut butter hour. and jello shot. Mm. Oh, peanut, peanut butter and jello shot? Yeah. That's smart. That, that's it the, sounds better now when you said it. Than the, it the, the, <laughs> that's the happy hour. So you get your peanut butter and jelly, and then you also get a Jello shot. Oh, it's a PB and J. Yeah, and then you get the Jello shot. Yeah, yeah. you don't get the J. Yeah, there's no peanut butter in the Jello shot. There isn't. No. Or is there peanut butter in the Jello shot? Why not have you you could have a a Jello shot and like peanut butter whiskey or something next to it. Or can you eat the Jello shot on the sandwich? This is a liquor sandwich. Well, yeah, <laughs> make it a dip. You, you, it's like a dip. You dip the PB and J in the and the it, whiskey. Yeah, and did then you, you eat did it. Did you just invent the liquor sandwich? <laughs> 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 uh, everyone just slid past that. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's a liquor sandwich. A liquor sandwich. He's either mad or a genius, but <laughs> that's wild. That is yeah. nice. It's a it's liquor a sandwich. There's so yeah. many million dollars ideas that have happened in this basement. I think that's one <laughs> what's of them. wrong with you. <laughs> Too many liquor sandwiches. Yeah. <laughs> Haven't you eaten today? Yeah. How many LJs have you had? Yeah. LJ? Yeah. Liquor yeah. jelly sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> uh, like you get, you're getting uh, Neverland drunk in here. Sure, <laughs> is, that? Yeah. is that a thing? I think so. Uh, Jamison. J- J- Jamison. <laughs> <laughs> Jamison, <laughs> who said that? <laughs> Show yourself. <laughs> oh man, someone keep it going. Yeah, I think Chris is in charge of this entire event. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The Jamison shots. When's camp? Oh, uh, Jelly Belly shots. August twenty third, twenty fourth, and twenty fifth. Tickets I are on sale it. right now <laughs> on Eventbrite.com. dot com. Yeah. You can do belly shots and butter shots. Butter shot. You know, you're taking it down. You know what a butter shot is, people. Is that a shot out of your butt? Oh, you can put it in your armpit. <laughs> what? <laughs> Why would it be called a butt shot? Because it's butter. Oh, I got you. Okay. I was trying to keep it PG. I, I remembered we are not on the after brunch. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can talk about butts. Not the way I wanted to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <Interesting>. <laughs> oh my god, it's great. <laughs> uh, guys, it's about time for a Tinker Coffee break. Now you serve Tinker Coffee, a love handle, correct? We do. It's fantastic. It's it's like. Well, how would you describe it? I would say it's wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> I would say it's in it's in uh, it's uh, it, it'll like it's robust yet approachable. There's berry tones. There is berry tones. I, and it, it would pair well perfectly with the liquor sandwich. Oh, <laughs> yeah. man, you ain't kidding. <laughs> like, the liquor sandwich brings you down. The Tinker Coffee brings yeah. you back up. Yeah. 
Um, healthy as hell. <laughs> yeah. You can definitely get Tinker Coffee anytime over here at Harder Brunch. You can always go and love handle and grab a cup. But if you're at home and you want to deliver it to your house, you can have a, a coffee subscription. They'll oh, wow. deliver it straight to your door. And if you use promo code BRUNCH, you get 25% off your first order. Hey, Doug, I... I think I could smell that Tinker Coffee brewing upstairs. <laughs> hey, do you mind if I grab a cup? Let's go get some. Let's All right, let's some. do it. I'm down. We'll be right back. This week on the After Brunch Podcast. Yeah, Extra yeah, large. Whatever. Yeah, yeah. Is there a cutoff under which you don't consider? I mean, this this seems so, so, so like, I don't like answering this because one day I might meet my wife and and she might have, you know, Areoles that reach to the back, and then like, and then I don't want her, you know, what? like very big ones. Yeah, that, like okay. they go over the shoulders. Sure. Yeah, yeah. like the, the, in the armpit. Like, you know, what I'm saying? I don't know how they work, but like, I like I like you. You were weren't gonna be like I'm one day I'm gonna be my wife, and maybe she's got small boobs because you're like yeah, I can't even stretch that far. That's crazy. Join us at patreoncom slash brunch Welcome back. Oh, man, that Tinker Coffee was good. Mm. Oh, my God. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> really hit the spot. I'm charged up. I didn't even get any. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Hey, hey, lose, 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 <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. Oh, I hear that percolator percolating. <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, yeah, really excited. So here's my other question I was thinking about, because uh, you make movies. You're, you're very into, like, old school movies. Is there going to be any kind of, like, visual film component of your new bar do you think is it a movie night or anything Ooh, mm. i don't know I, you want to do a movie night or something yeah sometime? i mean i think definitely i mean we both have like massive vhs collections you have one of the best vhs collections that i've ever seen dude i always thought like when i like started building mine up yeah. i always thought it was gonna pale in comparison to yours oh come and on, then i was man. like oh shit i have like ten thousand more films yeah i mean you, you have a you, dude the whole cat head on 10th street is it's amazing. I, I it looks like a uh, a video store. Yeah, it's bonkers. Yeah, fantastic. I'm blown away. It's like a mom and pop video store. It's oh, yeah, exactly it's, it's what it looks insane. like. Yeah, you should have rentals there. I don't know why you don't rent to people. I don't know. I think because uh, no one has a VCR anymore. Right. I'd have to rent the VCRs. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. Be, it'd be yeah. a fifty-fifty chance. That and, they and, work yeah, yeah. That. And the old and the old TVs to hook up to. It's a real. It's yeah. a real thing. You come yeah. away with a whole crate of shit. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, we we talked about like putting uh, like tube TVs and some like yeah. booths with like uh, like Nintendo's hooked up and stuff. Yeah, yeah. We we'll get that get that one out of my house. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've been talking about like some cool. I'll tell you what, man. You drop a Nintendo shit. anywhere, people still play the shit out. Yeah, like when I used right. to have my food truck, we had a N sixty four, so people could play Mario Kart while they're waiting. Nice. On their food, uh, and people, people loved it. Dude, lesser known, but like I feel way better than Mario Kart was Mario Golf. Mm. Mm. Oh wow! Are they, are they golfing? Yeah, the Mario, it was like a golf game. I didn't, I didn't know there was even a golf game. Yeah, no, I've it's never heard that fantastic. take. But yeah, <laughs> way better than Mario Kart. I think you're wrong. Is it, yeah. is it, is it, it, it is a gentleman's video game? Hey, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> for the distinguished. Uh, Seventh grade. Yeah, I feel like I feel like my brother could have been playing that, and then I would have went and got cereal for us or something, and came back and be like, "What happened?" He's like, "I, you know, I, I you hit it." It's into still golf bunker. It's still <laughs> golf. Yeah, yeah, it's just golfing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. What happened? Uh, don't, yeah, don't wake up, mom. Nah, it's crazy. You know? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Turn that golf game off. Mario Golf. I got you. I got you. Mario Golf. I think you're getting yelled at about a golf game. Just turn that golf game. Yeah, so you, damn loud. Yeah, you kids are up all yeah. night. No who more golf you, games. Who do you think you are, Chi Chi Rodriguez? <laughs> right. <laughs> what is this? What is that? What is that specific putty move you do? What is this? <laughs> You know? <laughs> What's next? That was my childhood. Luigi. Yes. <laughs> that was like my that was my first uh, job as a child. It was like it was like the tail end of the Ma and Pop video stores and one opened like in my neighborhood, like a block away from my awesome. house. And uh I had gone away for the summer to camp and when I came back or the, a week and when I came back my friends like 
well, I'm a, I'm a grown up now. I got a job. We were like 12. Yeah. And I was like, you got a job? He's like, yeah, I work at this video store. And I was like, can I get a job at the video store? He's like, I don't know. Let me talk. Yeah. 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 Know, man. <laughs> it's pretty tough, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was, he was supposed to go around and hang like uh, door hangers in the neighborhood. And, yeah, get, yeah. and they, he would get paid in free rentals, oh, which as a kid oh. is like that's crazy. It's amazing. That's killer. Yeah. And then I was like, dude, I can do that with you. And he goes, here's the thing. I don't actually hang them up. I just go throw them in a yeah. dumpster. <laughs> oh. Hey, here's the thing, man. I'm lazy as shit. Yeah. But I want to get those movies, so I got to wait 12 hours. Yeah. I might as well have been fucking hanging them up. Yeah. You know? right. well, who knows? But then it, it then it turned into we would we would. Uh, it, remember you get the rings like you go you take the little ring off of the movie and then yeah, you yeah, take yeah. it up to the we would have to return the rings back to their spots <laughs> the lord of the rings and, the, and, there, and then there was like <laughs> some just older teenager that was just sitting there not doing anything it was just yeah. like like he or she was playing like Super Nintendo, which had just come out. Absolutely, and we we're just like, oh, it's me. But I remember they had a, a like a back room with the saloon doors, and we yeah. weren't allowed in there. But they had like a little like putt putter thing, like putter golf thing, what? and we'd always just accidentally hit the ball. But I was like, oh, I gotta go get the ball, and then I went in and just tried to take as many mental pictures as I could. And that's oh, what yeah. that's what I first saw at first porn with a a, a great. Like pun name, and it was backside to the future. Oh, that's great! <laughs> that's like, great. That's like, great. I want to live in this room. Yeah, yeah. I worked. <laughs> at, I worked at the video store. I worked at the video store too. Yeah, it was the movie gallery in Aberdeen, Washington. Oh, fantastic! Yeah, that was like uh, when did I move there? Like oh four. Oh man, that's tail. Uh, the tail end. end of the VHS. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we mostly had DVDs, but yeah, as well, we were the only video store in Aberdeen because Aberdeen, Washington, is. Tiny town, Western Washington, like uh, Kirk Cobain's from there. Yeah, and uh, only video store in town that did had he the... work at the video store too? No, no, he died. My bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Have you guys heard of the culture of collecting VHSs? There's like this thing where people are collecting a lot of VHSs, like where they'll have piles and piles of VHSs because now they're kind of popular in some type of like underground. Tape collectors. I mean, I guess. I mean, you should. I mean, they they the both shop. do that. Dad, I feel it. Like, I feel like are you. Fu- are you you just described like me and Chris. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you said that no one does it but you guys. No, no. no there's. I think everybody fucking does it. <laughs> oh yeah, wow! It's fantastic. Wow. Because it's great. Like seeing the video. Like you see the tape. You look at all these things. Like, like you'll look down. You'd be like, maybe I'll fucking. I don't know, maybe I'll watch, like, uh, Rhinestone today. Maybe I'll watch fucking uh, The Keep today. You know, I mean, you don't know what you're going to watch. You're looking at the fucking tapes. This is... <laughs> you don't even know yet. And then you go like this. You know what else? I'll, I'll fucking watch this one. And then you fucking put it in and you go, holy shit, man, this is great. In the next two hours. You know, the next two hours, I don't have to think about it. Man, it's fucking wonderful. It takes you somewhere, man. It's fucking great. Yeah. Yeah, and then you yeah. look at that whole wall and it's almost like this catalog of time. It's like a beautiful thing. Like you go, man, I, I got fucking hours on this wall, man. I got fucking, I got dreams on this wall. It is the whole fucking wall, man. All yeah. before, yeah. before 2006. I got every fucking pizza I've ever had in 1987 <laughs> on this fucking wall, man. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's fucking, it's, it's beautiful. It's the library of pictures. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful, man. Do you remember, mm. like, I, I remember very specifically, like, certain... Like, I remember one of my favorite, like, childhood birthdays. I had to sleep over my friends. And we were, it was, like, when I first was, like, courageous enough to start watching. Because I was always scared of, like, scary movies as a kid. Like, all my friends would tell me about Freddy and Jason. And I was like, just hearing it is enough for me. Like, I, I don't need to watch that. But I remember we rented, we got, like, a bunch of, like, Rocky Top sodas and a bunch of candy and stuff, and then we uh, watched The People Under the Stairs. Oh, that's a good one. Cool. And it was just like, oh, it was like the first horror, one of the first horror movies I remember watching, it was like a little black kid breaking into a house. Yeah, right. <laughs> and I was like, oh, this this is getting close to home. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's awesome. Wait, how old were you? I was like the kid's age, I feel like, in it. And I was just like, I wouldn't be doing none of this shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah, wild. Yeah, yeah. He was 23 years old. Okay. Yeah. yeah, he was in college. He went home. Because I, I first watched Alien when I was like seven. Oh, yeah. No way. It's yeah. a great film. 
Yeah. And I was like, this is fucking amazing. You're fucking terrified. We would like, and then after that, we'd like start playing Alien. Oh, cool. Me and my sister, we'd like yeah, be in like, the basement. You're like, like, all right, you're the, you're, you're, the, you're, the, you're the alien. Yeah. I'm like, you know, and you'd hide. I mean, it was like hide and seek, but like horror themed. Yeah. I remember uh, I remember playing movies. Like, I remember my friends, what, before I'd even ever saw Ghostbuster, my friends had, and they just memorized every line, and then they would just like give us our lines. And they would just. Oh, uh, yeah. We do that with uh, Never Ending Story and Little Shop of Horror. Uh, cool. What? When I was like six or seven. Oh, yeah, it was yeah. wild. And then, like when uh, when I was a kid, when in like '93, when Jurassic Park came out, whenever it rained, yeah. we'd go out. Uh, we'd go outside. We'd be like, "Mom, we're gonna go out in the car," because my parents had like an old suburban. Yeah. And we would just like, my mom give us the keys to the car, and we just go sit in the car in like a, a like a rainstorm and like play Jurassic oh, Park. Cool. <laughs> oh, you know. So cool. <laughs> somebody like, just like pound like, on the table. Yeah, and like we'd have a flash. I'd be like, turn it off, turn uh, it off. You know, like. Ah, oh, it's beautiful. Man. Yeah, it was wild. Uh, I think it was like 93, uh, for sure 93, I think 93 and maybe 95, like so many bomb ass movies came out in 93. Oh, like it was just a huge year for yeah. movies. Oh yeah. I remember seeing that in a crowded theater. Like, I mean, just asses to elbows packed in and just being like, I felt like there really were dinosaurs alive. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 It was crazy. Fucking nuts, man. I, dude, I remember with that never ending story, man. Like, everyone fronting like they read books or whatever, and I was, like, trying to do that, too. <laughs> and I was like, no, I'm fucking read. You don't even know how to read. You know what I mean? Like, I remember that came, you know, that came out, and I was like, oh, yeah, you know, this sounds great. You know, I'm the... Get under my blankets and, hey, mom, you know, if I uh, got a little flashlight under here with my book, you know, probably just me with my old library stuff again, you know? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I know you, I know you, fail, you know, you can't fucking read. Yeah. You know, and I was like, well, just, you know. I know you I'm can't read. I'm gonna, you know. <laughs> I'm but gonna learn. But, you know, but it's just, you know, I'm a little slow with the, you know, with the reading. You know? But yeah, I remember that. Yeah, never ending story is great. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I will work at a fucking video rental place though at one point. You know what I mean? My brother will open the store and I will close the store. And this will be the late nineties, into mm. the early two thousands. Yeah, we will do this. Yeah, no, there well. will be a pornography section. I will have to look at the thing and go. Jesus Christ, don't open those fucking magazines. Yeah. I worked in a video warehouse by, like, the the late 90s. And it was, like, like you know, like, when, like, Osco Drugs had, like, a video department or whatever, when they get done with their copy of Driving Miss Daisy or whatever, they send it back to this warehouse. And then there's just a bunch of... A bunch of people that work in there, and they have to scrape all the stickers off and like oh, cl- yeah. clean it off, and then just get it prepared for resale. What do they gotta scrape off those pornography? <laughs> yeah, like, and, but you would check the gate on the tape. You press a button, and you flip the gate up and check the tape quality, and then like hit it with goo gone to make sure all the stickers were gone. And I did that one day for like yeah, I was like eighteen. I did that for eight hours working for temp agency, and I was like, I want to blow my brains Wild. out. Yeah. And I was like, if there's anything else I could do, and so the next day they put me on this assembly line. But it was just these movies yeah, coming you, up. You think that's bad? <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. It was just yeah. like it was these movies coming up, and then you would just uh, take them off the assembly line and put them into a box. And then when the box is full, you tape it up and whatever. And uh, I was just doing that, and then I just started reading all the boxes, and I was just like, "Oh, what's this movie about?" Well, okay, then I put it in, and I'm like, "Oh, what's this movie about?" And this Mexican dude I worked with had been there for like years. He was mad at me, and he was like, "You." No good. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, what? He's like, you, you, you read, you read, you're lazy. And I was like, I'm, I could knock this out as fast as you can. And he's like, I don't think so. And then, so I just started like packing them in and he started packing them in. And we were just going back and forth. It was like this whole, like John Henry versus like Whoa. the like the, the automatic uh, yeah. pile driver. <laughs> and then And then they called like lunch break. And then we both kept stacking our boxes. Yeah, and then your boss came in and said, hey, what was that movie about that you guys were (laughs) packaging, you know? And then Dyke goes, I believe it was a little bit of a romantic thriller. And uh, I believe it had a comedic tone to it. And it had fucking Rebecca D. Mornay in it. And then... 
And then that guy got fired. <laughs> And no one knows where the fuck he, he couldn't feed his kids after that. <laughs> That's pretty fucked up, man. man. What a wild job to have, too. Like, like that was, like, yeah, the where, highlight. Where did you, where, where did you live? Where were you living? Were you, were you living? Yeah. My, friend, my friend also worked at the warehouse, but he had, like, the best job. And, like, I was just, like, trying to work my way. Because, like, he just went around and, like, had a scanning machine and just, like, scanned movies. But then, yeah. like, he would bring them, like, a box of movies every week. So I would watch all these, like, uh, Japanese films and stuff that would come oh. out. They we they would be shipped overseas, but like like I saw a Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, like two years before it came out in America. Like, oh, yeah. but it was like the Japanese version or whatever. Mm. Yeah. Um, well, I was gonna say both of them are the Japanese version. <laughs> well, <laughs> it was the, ja- <laughs> the Japanese release. Okay, uh. <laughs> I was. Like, yeah. like I don't think there I, was, I get it. Like I don't, I don't, I don't remember if there was like don't, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Don't, don't ruin Dyke's yeah. flex about seeing it two years before <laughs> everybody else. <laughs> yeah, two years before Dyke found out that it was. It out. was the Japanese <laughs> it had actual Japanese people. <laughs> I saw the one with the kung fu in it. That's her, that's yeah. the one I saw. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw the good one. But in that job, sorry, I have to say though, like any job where you have to say the word twice, what do you do? I tape tape. Like mm-hmm. that, people are checking out after the second tape. All right, yeah. anything you say after that, someone shut down. Well, there was a while when I was eighteen. I'm sorry, where I was just tape. I I took I worked for that this like mean. it wasn't a real temp agency. It was this thing where you go if you wake You're up. You're the nurse for the temps. You the temp for temps. <laughs> yes. See, I just temp the temps, man. You know, yeah. I, I don't do this. Shit. They were like work. It was just like work finding jobs. So you'd wake up at like four. You'd go down at four in the morning, five in the morning, and you'd wait in line. And you'd fill out a thing, and they'd be like, okay, uh, we're going to send you down to this radioactive plant. You know, and you're like, okay. Dang. And then you work eight hours, and then I, I think they paid you. I think you would get like 40 bucks at the end of the day. You get $40. Yeah, after. 40 bucks or crouching tire hitting dragon. Four, 40 bones. Mm-hmm. And they sent me to a uh, like a recycling plant one day. And I just sorted like recycling stuff off a conveyor belt for eight hours. And like I saw the guys that were in their forties that had been doing it for years and they they had like shanties they were singing and stuff like that. I was like, I'll I'll I will i i will not make it. I will not make it. And that's But I'm glad that I did that stuff because I realized very early that like I could never do like construction. I could never do like I'm not handy. I don't like working in repetitive jobs. No. Like I could never work on like a work site or construction or in a warehouse of any kind. And I know like all my friends growing up, like that's what they did. They they were gonna graduate. They were gonna get a good job at a warehouse and then have kids. Yeah. And I was just like, at seventeen, I was like, I don't want to do that. No, like, no. You, at seventeen, you shouldn't say I want to. In a warehouse with children. On the on the west side, that was like the kids. Well, like I don't even think warehouse. I don't think anyone on the west side planned to have kids. It was just always like an eventuality. It's like, look, sooner or later, you're gonna have a whoops a baby, and and there you are. True. Oh, I don't know how we got from VHS to that (laughs) (laughs) to whoops a baby. I I tried the silent thing. It is actually kind of fun. Because I was like, oh, this isn't my fault. (laughs) (laughs) That was a wild rabbit hole. That was wild, man. So where'd you grow up then? You grew up in the west side of of Indianapolis? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I went to Ritter for two years and then Ben Davis for two years. So small school, big school. And then, because you guys all, none of you guys are from Indy, right? I'm not from Indy. Yeah. Yeah, I grew up in Indianapolis. That's nice. Oh, yeah. And then moved to the east side about 10, 12 years ago. That's a wild amount of specific industry that you were working in at a young age. That's cool. And that's cool. Yeah. I Yeah. I can't imagine. Well, actually, I can't because, like, I, I used to work, like, in this factory as a kid. And it's hard to work in a factory as a kid, you know? I don't want to be demeaning to anybody's job. Yeah, because you that's... think you think also time's going like a little bit. Sl- you know what I mean? Like you'll be like you'll look at a clock when you're doing like a menial job. Or, yeah, yeah. I've had labor jobs and I've had, yeah, like where you're like, and when you're young, like if you're 19 and you're working yeah. something like that, you go, 
Ah, oh, fuck, man. You look up at the clock and you're like, it's, it's, it's I forever. had three beers yesterday. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like, holy shit, that feels like 16 hours. Yeah. It, was, it was a fucking hour and a half. Yeah. One you know? day oh, in a factory as a, as a teenager feels like it's three days. Yeah. I mean, I, I've lived three lifetimes there. Now, when you're Dude, older, absolutely. well, there's older older guys who get through a day like nothing yeah. because they've been through it so yeah, many they, times. Yeah. And they tell themselves like, yeah, oh, they I clock I out when they this. clock in, man. Yeah. They told them that... 5,000 times they've said, you know, hey, we're going to get through this. Absolutely. It, a teenager only has sometimes 100 yeah. versus 5,000. Yeah. I, I don't I, like those numbers. I remember going and, like, hiding in the bathroom, just trying to take some time off See? the clock of the day. Yeah. 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 That and kind just, of shit, yeah. Because, like, when you, work in a, when you work in a kitchen, and I, like, I think that's what I found is, like, when you do any kind of task-based jobs where it's just, like, I have to bang this much out as my day. Yeah. Then you're working against the clock. You know what I'm saying? It's almost, it works in reverse where it's just like, oh, oh I shit. I don't, I mean, yeah, I need more time to get all yeah. this stuff done. And But any job where you have to, you, you, you hit it on the head there. Any job where you have to like, oh, man, I'm just watching this clock. I'm just praying yeah, for time clock, to pass. Yeah. It's so slow. And those kind of jobs always seem like they have clocks everywhere you look. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? You'll be like, yeah, just look in the eye. I tie my shoe, man. And you're like, man, it's crazy. I got a clock on the floor. Yeah, and I think there's yeah. something wild to put it there. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. Like, just in between in my feet. Hey, just in right. case. If you, if you look down, yeah. you need to know Absolutely. how slow you're going. Absolutely. Yeah. Time is money. I, I always say that, uh, Chris, you are the. Fun, I think you're the funniest non-comic that we have on the show. Like I always feel like you have a comic sensibility. hundred percent. One of my favorite things uh, is to watch you go and do local TV news spots. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. it is, I mean, I mean, you don't cuss on the news, but I feel like I could. But <laughs> yeah, I, could. I could easily do it. I know the word. I feel like I, I feel like you bring story. you bring like a comics like sensibility to it, where you're just like, I'm just gonna come and do and say whatever I want, and it, it's fun. Yeah. They love it. But it's always like, they always seem a little like, I don't know, yeah, this could go anyway. Like, yeah, you're like, look at these people. They're news people. <laughs> <laughs> like, it, that, talk about guys working in video stores. <laughs> Fucking you work in the news? It's 2024. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> you're, you're the news people. <laughs> okay, where do I go? Yeah. What, what What's hot right now? Yeah. What what should we do? Because like, who do the news people get their news? Yeah, from? yeah. Where is the, where, where where is this getting Where's put this out? To? Yeah. yeah. Well, who's who's uh, listening uh, to this? Uh oh. I'm 15 <laughs> minutes late to the news. Dude, I would actually. <laughs> what, what, wait. What should I do? <laughs> oh my god. Should you send me home now? <laughs> no. No. We'll still go with it. Okay, fantastic. Is was a blue shirt okay? I didn't know if we needed to talk about this beforehand. I'm yeah. I mean, the news seems archaic. Yeah, it was. I, mean. I feel like was it was it. I can't remember. If it was me and Zach. I mean, it seems wild right now, but it's fine. It was either me or Zach, or maybe it was but me and you. The sandwich is so good. <laughs> Oh, I think I'll come down. <laughs> where, where did you say you were at again? No, no. Where, 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 where was that? Oh, no, no. Oh, I love Saturdays. Oh, no, I like them even better than Fridays. No, Fridays are great, though. After I get off of work. Wah, wah. Don't get me started on Monday's lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but no, yeah, man. You just the, captured the essence of going on the news. Yeah, <laughs> no, the news is great. Yeah, we need seventeen sandwiches delivered at eight fourteen a.m. On a, you know, you're like, dude, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can I get a military time on that? Because <laughs> yeah, if we if we could, I'd like to be. The, I would like to. My I'd like to part, pin. I'd like to pinpoint it. My favorite part of the news is the like the small talk at the beginning before the camera turns on. Like yeah, oh, yeah, hey. to call, call it Valparaiso. Yeah, Valparaiso. Three, yeah, two, like moments. Yeah. Hi, and welcome hey. back. Yeah. <laughs> Just, uh, 
the whole switch is amazing. Like, hey, we're on TV now. Yeah, last, it's crazy. Last time we were on there, they literally like they went from like this story about a murdered girl who was like butchered and like it was oh it was God, horrific that, and then it was like fucking non-linear right. jumps and then it was like anyway now yeah. these guys want to talk about their fun summer camp let's go yeah like, yeah walking yeah. in sand what's up with that <laughs> yeah yeah oh it's kind of like when you and i sit in a room with a bunch of like non-profit wackos yeah and it'll be like hey, we're like hey, well I didn't get too much into it, but anyway, like yeah, we've been in some like meetings with like suits and stuff, and it'll all you know like I, I've dealt with a lot of that, kind of, and I'll just be sitting like, oh yeah, okay, you know, and I know it's all bullshit, but I'm I'm nodding oh, my yeah. head, and uh, someone will say something, Chris will just go, that's fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you see that that's like okay, yeah, sure, that <laughs> makes sense for you, but like I mean this this is crazy. <laughs> and I'm just like. Yeah, I mean it is. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's definitely uh, yeah. quite. Uh, uh, you know, it's unorthodox for you guys to uh, seems uh, put something that way, and yeah, you know, it seems insane. <laughs> yeah, it seems insane. But it's fun. That's why we work. I think comedy Absolutely. and podcasting has made me not be able to have normal conversations anymore. Like when I'm out, like when I go, like go to work and to, like meeting new people about the work day and stuff. I'm like, what do I talk to these people about? Like the conversations that I have are so bizarre. That I'm just like I don't. This isn't feel r- real to me, you know. Like, yeah. but because I think it's like we talk about so much wild stuff, you know, in in comedy and podcasting that like, I don't know how to talk about the weather very well. Sure. Well, because the weather's boring. Well, yeah. yeah. Or like I don't know how to talk. I don't know. How, I don't know how to talk to my stepdad. Right. Like, like yeah. my stepdad. <laughs> like we 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 like love each other, you know. But like we we just like try to like we just look at each other and we're like yeah, I don't I don't you're like, like hey is it raining and you're like no you guys are you guys are being kind of weatherist right now yeah, and yeah. Sorry. we have some big weather people out there we want to apologize Sorry. To all our weather fans people that are big fans of weather. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this, hey, big shout out to Big Weather! Yeah, I like to do a shout out to the wind. Big yeah. Weather. <laughs> big, big Weather. weather. Yeah. Shout big out to Big Weather's <laughs> watching. Big Weather's Be crazy. Careful. Big Weather, Flat Earth, Round Earth, Square Earth. Let's do it! Square Earth. You know? Yeah, yeah, Square, square Earth. Moon. Guys, doing it up. Square Moon. <laughs> shout yeah. out. We got Square Moon, Big Weather, Round Earth. Shout out Square Moon. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Earth, Wind, and Fire. Dude, I want the Round Earthers. You know, the ones that don't think it's a sphere. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we have the new school of thought going, the square moon theory. Respect. Okay. I don't know if it's going to be worth <laughs> it to bring it back there. Like, in comedy, I'm already doing the wrong thing. But the fact that they brought up a dead girl before, it was meat cakes or summer. It was okay. meat cakes, yeah. But the fact that they brought up a dead girl before our meat cakes is, like, we got buried by someone that got buried. <laughs> you understand? <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't worth it. That's crazy. It never is. Um, it's falling apart. What is happening? <laughs> so <laughs> I kept this thinking something was going to happen. I don't. Uh, I don't. Uh, no, I was going to say um, Upland Brewing is one of our sponsors. <laughs> oh man, we've been we've been having a few brews. We've been having a few. Yeah. I was saying, am I grabbing another one? Oh, it's the, a, it's the bomb brew. Hey, yeah. Grab me one. I gotcha. It's, it's, it's a perfect time for an Upland uh, brew break. I, I'm drinking um, this delicious campsite right now. Um, and we're going to be going camping this weekend. Um, I think we're going to take some Upland beers with us. Oh, yeah. I'm definitely taking campsite. Hey, how many are you going to take? I'm probably going to take six campsite. Ooh. How long are you going camping? One hour. <laughs> wow. Hey, that makes sense. And it's, yeah, it's going to be fun. Hell yeah. What You had a campsite. You're having one right now. Oh, my God. That's your second that's, camp. That's your. This is my first one. I got to to be completely yeah. honest. Yeah. This might be my third campsite. <laughs> Ooh. I feel like I'm camp. in the fire. Ooh. It ain't explain a little bit. <laughs> it's explain a little bit. Of that news story. <laughs> what was the news story? <laughs> Welcome Listen, back. man, last time I was on the news. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that shit's crazy. Going into a fucking news thing is fucking crazy. 
It's, yeah, whatever. That's fucking insane. That's like a box. You go into the box and then they go, um, yeah, uh, who are you? And you're like, yeah, dude, I'm not supposed to be here. I fucking walked into a, a fucking nondescript building on fucking Meridian, you know, like yeah. a little bit further up from downtown. You know, you're like, what the fuck are you talking about? So do you see, you don't see news bumps? You aren't, you aren't afraid of big news? No, no, no. I got no, I got no idea about news, news, news. I mean, it's just crazy. The building, the, it's crazy going um, in and being on the news. I'm sure there's people that watch the news in a traditional fashion. I'm not I'm sure where that's. You watch the news? I don't know. Every time I go on the news, I'll get like one text or phone call or someone is like, hey, I was, uh. I was eating cereal this morning, saw you on the news, and I'm like, you watch the news? Right. Which is weird, because people don't do that for YouTube. Like, I, don't, yeah. I think it's like, like, it's the same it might box. be our generation, yeah. too, of being like, because it would be crazy to be like, you know, if it was like 1988 to like, uh, I don't know, 1995 or something, and like your mom's like, yo, man, I saw you on the news. You'd be like, I was on the news, mom, and I said... I love you, mom. Yeah. You know, and your mom would be like, "Fucking meant everything to me." You know, I saw that shit. You know, and everyone yeah. saw that. That was the news. It was the news. I feel like there was you know, a thing I mean, where like, it's just like, like the that was the highlight of some people. Like, you know, it's like yeah. I made the world's the largest ball of twine in our county. You know, yeah. got on the yeah. news once. That's the peak. You know, for a lot of people. I mean, there's like, some places that will like loop their news story on like an old like TV in the corner. From the time they were on the news. Oh, wow. Yeah, Wild. the news yeah, it yeah. used to be big. Like, you could go in a bar and be like, yep, uh, I think I'm going to give this one free. Like, why? <laughs> Look at that guy right there. <laughs> That's you? Yeah. On the news? On the news. This yeah. one's on us. I was on the news when I was 17. What were you doing? Uh, me and my buddy Mick did a, uh, we went to like a science fair. We gave a pres- it was this like school-wide science fair. Yeah. And we gave a presentation on global warming. But, I mean, that that's not why we're on the news. We, like, okay. dressed up, like, we had, like, lab coats, and we had, like, crazy hair, and we did this, like, crazy PowerPoint presentation with, like, but how we were, fake. like, characters as wild. That's fantastic. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. Global warming is not funny. No, it's not, but we were funny. Some people will call it fake. A lot of people are going to get hurt if we don't take it seriously. Right. Yeah, no, man, dead serious. <laughs> I mean, like, I, we don't joke about the whole world. Yeah. All right. That's the whole world. That's it. World. There's got to be a line. The earth is the earth is flat, but it is warming. <laughs> well, that's that's what was kind of like fucked up because I mean, this is like 2001. You could like be funny about global warming and talk about global warming. Absolutely, but it wasn't like people weren't like that's fake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's like right before. Yeah, there was right a time be- when people didn't say yeah. it was fake. That's right. <laughs> that's right before someone was like, someone was like. Yo, what if we like, just did this? Because like Bill Nye yeah. talked about global warming yeah. in like 1997 yeah, and like made it funny and fun. Which like I mean the the, the thing that of like the uh, <laughs> the court jester has the ear of the king because like mm. he uh, speaks and parts truth through comedy. Yeah. I just like so, to, if anyone talks yeah. about anything in the news to me, I just say it's fake now. Be like, man, these right. blacks really killing each other on the south side of Chicago, and I'm like, that's fake. Oh yeah, it's hundred percent fake. Never happened. Just call everything everything <laughs> fake. Maybe yeah, you should have picked a lighter subject. <laughs> I mean, we went right in there. Um, I mean, <laughs> no, don't save him. That's it. Go ahead, and drop a beat for me there, Zach. We'll end on that bomb. Oh no, don't. <laughs> don't end on that. Um, don't end on that. We got some white fans out there that are bummed. <laughs> yes. they're, they're, they're driving the car right now like, hey, I like those guys. I, I'm not trying to tap dance, but I'm just saying. Not on that. <laughs> not on that. Um, where Ooh. can people find and follow you guys on? Do you have your social media up for uh, handshake? <laughs> Speaking uh, of. So where are you guys located at? <laughs> Tell everybody yeah, where you're going to be. We're in the dumpster out back. Where's I love the sandwiches. Uh, uh, cat, uh, 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 handshake Indie on Instagram. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Check us out. Yeah. Come to a pop up or something. Uh, we got some plan for the summer. Yeah. Yeah. We got some stuff coming up for the summer. 
Maybe do some like big pop ups with a big smoker. He'll do a bunch of like the sausages that he does. I'll oh, do yeah. some of the, like the the whole cut meats that I do. And then um yeah, and then I don't know, man. Like it'll be like it'll probably be almost close to a year out, but you'll know when we're open, man. We'll have a fucking place popping, man. It'll be sick. We know yeah. it's gonna be good. I'm very excited yeah. and looking forward to it. Yeah, thank you for having us on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Appreciate yeah. it. Always, always, Thaddeus J. You can find me at Fab Nikivas, Instagram, X, Twitter. If you have threads, I guess follow me on that too. I guess I'm supposed to be doing stuff on that. Um, you can follow me at jugglingonastreet.com. That's uh, me juggling juggling on any street in Indianapolis. Can you juggle good? I can juggle three balls. Okay. Respect. <laughs> Ooh, that was, no follow-up I, I questions. Don't <laughs> juggle, you don't juggle. No, that's cool. Yeah, juggling. yeah. I, I like and juggling a lot. I never juggle yeah, about juggling, cool. sir. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry. I apologize. Zach, Rome? Please forgive me. <laughs> follow me at Zach underscore Rome on all social media. You're you're actually doing stuff with your social media now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you guys he, actually follow him now. Yeah. He posts a bit. Well, I think it's because he's he got all sexy now, so he's like the, oh, he yeah. likes to drop all the selfies. Yeah. Zach, Zach, you're looking out here like. You gotta take. You talking about sexuality? Yeah, sexuality. <laughs> sexuality. Yeah. I, I mean, know, I dude, yeah, he's that. in like a, a cutoff. Like when Zach goes on his cutoff. I mean, you look cool as shit, man. He, he I, looks I, great. I, I told you that when I walked in. I said, man, I love your fucking fit, man. It looks fucking cool as fuck. You look you, cool. You, you look, look like here. you could have skate like a uh, uh, ice. Not ice skated here. You look like rollerbladed. Gator, man. Rollerbladed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I should. Wow. I should travel only on rollerblades <laughs> for the rest of the summer. Yeah, that'd be fun. All right. Yeah. Gwen Sunkel, would you like a plug? Hey, make sure you're following Harder Brunch on Patreon. You're subscribed at www.patreon.com oh, yeah. backslash Harder Brunch. $3 a month will get you access to episodes even more unhinged than this, if you can believe it. <laughs> um, and come see me performing at Irvington Pride on June 29th in the abandoned lot behind Irvington Vinyl and Bucks. <laughs> okay. Nice. All right. Uh, that was the best Patreon commercial in yeah, the right, 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 right. like, That's how you do it. That's how you do it right there. What if we just clip that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. we just clip we that. Just clip that's that. the new one. That's what uh, guys, thank you so much. Um, thank you. We love. I love. It always gets silly when Chris Benedict's in the house, but that's the way we love it. Sad as and uh, see, I just put it all off on, on you. <laughs> I put that bomb <laughs> at the end of. <laughs> guys, we, we always. I always bomb when Chris is over here at the end of the podcast. So don't even worry about it. It's not my fault. It's, it's Chris's right. fault. No. Uh, we love you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.